In a world where environmental consciousness is no longer an option but a necessity, Sustainability Asia is bringing together visionaries, activists and leaders in the realm of sustainability and environmental preservation. In bite-sized episodes, each lasting no longer than 15 minutes, this podcast delves into the crucial issues, innovative solutions and transformative products shaping our sustainable future. Today, I'm with Desmond Chow, founder and CEO of Singapore Crawfish. Desmond is a leading figure in the crawfish industry who is looking to revolutionize crawfish aquaculture and transform Asia's agricultural sector. Desmond, can you tell us about Singapore Crawfish? Who are you and what's inspired you with this initiative? Sure. So Singapore Crawfish is a company born out of Singapore. We specialize in growing, hatching, and of course, um, technologies of crawfish. But what got you into crawfish? So basically, back in 2017, I was um, lecturing in a few universities. And back then, you know, um, me and my students, we were thinking, you know, what can we do to help with food security, food sustainability, and help alleviate poverty? So we were starting over hundreds of different types of crops, animals, plants, and we were figuring, you know, which type of crop is the most suitable for poor farmers around the world to grow. So after researching many, many different types of crops and animals, we realized that crawfish was the winner, basically because it's extremely hardy and it can, it's very, very tolerant to different temperatures and environments. So with that, do you have a background in science and agriculture? I've always been a businessman and university lecturer. So I've been lecturing in different universities in Singapore, Australia, and also the UK. And yeah, just doing business. That's when I realized that in this industry, what's the next big industry? And we believe that food is the next big thing. So with the product, what what are you offering? So we are offering farmers an opportunity to grow crawfish and to increase their income by 400%. And I believe this is a great opportunity. Not only does it increase the income of the farmers, crawfish has proven to be an extremely healthy and good source of food. Very high in protein, vitamins, amino acid, low in fat, low in cholesterol. I've seen crawfish for sale that are like an inch Mm -hmm. long. That's not going to feed many people. (laughs) Uh, Do you have a specific species that you promote and use? Yeah. So we use the Charex corticarinatus that originates from Australia. Of course, there are crawfishes that's one inch in size, four inches in size, and ours are roughly about 12 inches in size. So there are actually more than 640 species of crawfishes in this world. And over the years, we have researched on different species and we realized that the Cherex is the most commercially viable to grow and it's the winner. We today call it the king of crawfish. Wow. As a farmer, what do I need to start being a part of this project? Actually, all you need is land. And water. A a pond? Yeah, a pond, a paddy field. Okay, a paddy field. That's interesting because in Thailand, obviously, we've got a huge agricultural industry of rice growing. Could we adapt the rice paddy to then introduce your crawfish? Exactly. So this is the concept that we have developed to grow crawfish with paddy. And we call this multi-cropping. The concept is that we put the crawfishes in the paddy fields along with fishes. So you see, in the paddy, we restructure the paddy fields to suit our project. And in these fields, we can grow rice, crawfish, and fish. And this is extremely beneficial because, number one, the feces of the fish and the crawfish acts as a natural fertilizer to the paddy and the plants. At the same time, the paddy and the plants absorb the ammonia from the water, providing a better environment for the crawfishes to survive. And lastly, the crawfishes actually feed on the insects in the paddy fields, which means there's less need for pesticides, and this makes your crop healthier. 
And does the crawfish lifespan follow that of a rice paddy? So before you're cropping the rice, have the crawfish reached maturity to a level where they can be sold? Exactly. So one of the best things about crawfish, it's four months to market size. So it only takes four months to reach market size, which coincides with the paddy cycle. So that's why we can grow crawfish and paddy together. One of the main things why crawfish is so easy to grow because it's extremely hardy, right? So just imagine it used to originate from swamps in, in a dirtier, swampier environment. Now we are putting them in a cleaner environment. So just imagine how well will they grow. And you asked me this question, what do farmers need to grow crawfish? Basically, all they need is just a piece of land. Uh, my farmers in Indonesia and in Malaysia, they have literally just dug a hole in their backyard, you know, throw the crawfishes in and they can survive. That's how hardy crawfishes are. And that's why we believe that crawfish is truly sustainable. And because of this, it can be grown in almost anywhere in the world. Just think about the rural parts of Africa, India, Indonesia, or even parts of the world where people face poverty and they can't afford good, healthy protein. By just introducing them the crawfish, they will have a good source of protein in just four months. Oh my goodness, this is a no-brainer. I'm surprised nobody's brought it to market before. <laughs> Congratulations on this new initiative. What about the viability and hardiness of the crawfish? Will they survive? What's the mortality rate if they're put in a, a rice paddy? But I thought that the crawfish would need flowing water like a river. It would be beneficial to, of course, have fresh flowing water, but because crawfishes are so hardy, they can survive uh, minimal water parameters, even if extreme temperatures, extremely low DO, which is dissolved oxygen, it's known as one of the hardiest aquatic creatures. So in the world today, many countries are eating crawfish, like the US, I'm sure you've heard of Louisiana crawfish, in China. China today produce 1.8 billion kilos of crawfish per year. Oh my goodness. Exactly. And even in Europe, if you Google it, you will see that crawfishes are actually one of the favorite crustaceans in Europe. So you can see that these places are already eating crawfish for decades and centuries. So we now see a huge opportunity to grow these crawfishes in Southeast Asia. There's one thing about crawfish though, they don't do too well in the cold. So early. Fine, we're in Thailand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So with the places that I just told you about, you know, in Europe, in China, in America, they have the four seasons, which means that in these countries, most farmers are only able to yield one crop per year or one cycle per year. But that weakness is actually our strength in Southeast Asia because we are tropical all year round, and especially in Thailand, the climate, the environment, the temperature is perfect for growing crawfish. Okay, now with the rice paddies, majority of farms will be cropping twice a year, and then the rice paddy becomes dry. Mm -hmm. And then for the next season, the water comes back and they've, they've got basically, ho or hopefully, two crops. What happens when you've harvested the crawfish? And then when I come round to replanting, mm -hmm. where do I get the livestock from? So this is where our technique comes into play. So when we say paddy fields, it's not just a normal paddy. We have to restructure the paddy to dig ditches around the paddy and within the paddy. So as you know, growing rice requires the flooding and of course drying of the fields to harvest the paddy, right? So at the same time, the crawfishes would live in the ditches, in the canals, and of course on the paddy fields. When we dry the paddy fields, the crawfishes would actually come into the canals and that's when we harvest them. And at the same time, it allows us to harvest the rice. So Singapore Crawfish has recently set up a small farm in Thailand producing and reproducing 
crawfish. And we are looking to onboard more farmers to grow this business to benefit the people of Thailand and to allow people of Thailand to have a healthy source of protein, healthy source of crawfish to eat. Fantastic. When I knew that you were coming to town and you were going to be on this Sustainability Asia podcast, I mentioned your concept to four farmers. Mm -hmm. They all said, how do we buy into this? Where do we get the crawfish? And they're anxious to start being part of the project. Two of the farmers asked the question, how can they sell the crawfish? Because they've got a distribution system for the rice. Mm -hmm. But now they've got to go to market and start selling all these crawfish. Or will there be a system in place to help them sell the crawfish? Yes, definitely. So the best thing about Singapore crawfish is we offer a buyback program. So farmers, they don't have to worry where or who to sell their crawfish to after they harvest. So they can just sell it all their crawfishes back to us. And we offer this buyback program at a very good market rate. Given the role Thai government's vision and mission to revolutionise the Thai agricultural sector over the next decade in terms of technology and sustainability, how does a farm sign up to be a part of this amazing Singapore Crawfish programme? So Singapore Crawfish, we are bringing our technology to Southeast Asia, especially to Thailand. And today, we are the only sustainable and commercial crawfish hatchery in the world. So we are able to reproduce crawfish sustainably. And with this reproduction of crawfish, we will be able to distribute them to the farmers to allow them to grow healthy crawfishes with great genetics. When can we start? Oh, we can start as soon as possible. So yeah, but of course at the same time, we are trying to work with the Thai government and of course private investors from Thailand to build the hatchery in order to reproduce crawfish. So crawfishes are extremely easy to grow, but very difficult to reproduce because they have this thing called filial cannibalism. It means that the parents will actually feed on the young of the crawfish. And that's why in the wild, the mortality of crawfishes is as high as 85%. But in our hatchery, we inverse the number. Survival rate of crawfish in our hatchery is as high as 85% crawfish. Amazing. With this crawfish system that you have, is it truly sustainable and ecologically beneficial to the environment? Yes. So we strongly believe that crawfish is one of the most sustainable produce to grow because of its low FCR. FCR stands for feed conversion ratio. So just to give you an example, right? The FCR of a cow is roughly about six to eight. FCR of a chicken is roughly about two to three. FCR for fishes, it hovers around two to 2.5. What that means is that I have to feed a cow eight kilos of food to get one kilo of beef. I have to feed a fish 2.5 kilos of small fish to get one kilo of big fish, which is why in a lot of countries they say that, you know, farming or fish farming, certain fish farming is not sustainable. But for crawfish, the FCR is as low as one to one. Wow. So for a Thai farmer that may have three rye, one acre of land, can you just remind us, what's the financial benefits of doing this beyond just having a rice paddy? Okay, so we have done this for many, many years, over thousands of hectares of land. So this is not just, not an academic theory. This is real. And we have done this and proven before. When a farmer incorporates crawfish farming into the paddy fields, they can stand to earn 400% of their income. Wow. And that is amazing. And of course, growing crawfishes in the party fields brings lots of other benefits. Like I mentioned, number one, the feces of the crawfish acts as a natural fertilizer. 
The crawfish just eats the insects in the putty fields, which means less needs for pesticides. And lastly, crawfishes, they like to slightly burrow the ground, which softens the soil a little, and that allows the putty to grow stronger and larger. And what do the crawfish eat? Would farmers feed them f uh, fish meal, or is there specific food that they can source? Okay, so crawfishes, they are scavengers. So they eat almost everything and anything. So back in our lab, we fed certain ingredients to our crawfishes. So that's when we realized by combining 12 special ingredients, we can allow our crawfishes to grow faster, bigger and healthier. If the farmers use your specially formulated feed, it means that they're going to have a faster growth and healthier stock. Exactly, and they can expect with these feed, crawfishes, they will grow about 10 to 20% bigger in size. It just seems, as I mentioned earlier, a no-brainer that a farmer should take this on board. If I'm farming rice, and yet by introducing crawfish, I can increase my profitability by 400%. That's really something that we need to get on board. Exactly. It's, it's amazing, and that's why Singapore Crawfish's main mission is to spread the word, to allow more farmers to know and learn about crawfish so this can benefit their lives. And we strongly believe that by growing crawfish, we are on a mission to change lives, to provide families with a good source of protein, amino acids, vitamins, a good healthy meal, and at the same time, increase their income so that they can have more money to educate themselves, to spend more time with their family. And lastly, we think that food is the next big thing. So why do I say that? Most farmers in the world today, they are in their 60s or 70s, which means that in the next 10 years, they are going to retire, right? At the same time, if we look at the younger generation today, most of these younger generations are into IT, engineering, you know, and all sorts of different fintech industries. How many of the younger population or the younger generation are into food farming? it's less than 1%. And we can see that the global population is rising and increasing really, really fast. So just imagine in the next five to 10 years, when these farmers retire, who's gonna provide food for the next generation? It's the solution, it's the future. You've got an amazing project and I just can't wait to see it in action and implemented in Thailand at the Thai farms. Thank you. Fantastic. I'm signing up. <laughs> <laughs> Desmond Chow, Singapore Crawfish, thank you for coming on Sustainability Asia today. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. And to our audience, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode. Mm -hmm.